Land or Resources is advancing exploration and development of precious and battery metals projects in eastern Canada. I'm delighted to be joined by the Chief Executive, Claude Le Masson. So, Claude, last time we spoke, you were a very new Chief Executive. You'd come out of retirement. You were formalising a strategic plan for Land or, which included potentially unloading, optioning, selling non-core assets, defining targets for the BAM Gold project and firming up a TSX listing. Now let's start with the latter because the company, I've extrapolated from a recent RNS, the company needs to shore up its finances for a TSX listing to look more robust in the eyes of the regulator. But I'm wondering, what is the rush to dual list? Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's actually a rush. It's a plan that, in general, the company has had for uh, probably two, three years. Uh, and it's been really uh, been actively pursued this year, from early this year on. Uh, the process does take time. So it takes, uh, you know, we're looking right now, at basically 10 months since we started. Uh, by the time we get the listing, probably be 11 months. Um, the the idea really is uh, for me to come on as a new CEO um, after the previous CEO retired um, was to really make the company more Canadian. Uh, truly, the assets are Canadian. Uh, the main asset, the Van Gogh project, is in Ontario, uh, not northwestern Ontario. And we really wanted to uh, move things back, if you want, uh, to Canada. And that includes obviously being listed in Canada, because right now, most of our shareholders are really from the UK and, and by nature, because we're listing on, listed on the AIM. Uh, but we really want to attract Canadian shareholders within the mix because it's a Canadian asset. Uh, and we're trying to make it a Canadian company with, you know, the staff being based here, uh, myself in Toronto, for example. So this is just a natural progression on, on the company uh, becoming truly a Canadian company. Okay, but what about those UK investors? They've been incredibly generous. I mean, since you took the helm, you've gone to the market an awful lot, asking for quite a considerable amount of money. Yeah, well, that's coming up. Uh, so part of the dual listing, so the listing on the TSX venture in Canada, uh, has a requirement that you have to have funds in the bank, significant funds. Uh, so uh, we are going to raise money. Uh, literally, uh, it's imminent uh, that we're going to announce that. Uh, we need to raise significant money to have that money in the bank to meet the listing requirements. Uh, so this is why we're going to our current shareholders getting approval for all the shares that we need to be potentially issued for this uh, for this financing. So that's very key to us. And it's it's just a progression of what's required. Okay, so key to the UK investors for several years was the BAM Gold project for years. It's been described as the flagship project. Does it remain so in your regime? Oh, absolutely. And I've stated that from day one is that uh, we have multiple assets, some in Ontario, some in uh, Quebec, and also uh, some in actually in Nevada in the, in the United States. But really, BAM is the key project. It's located on the Junior Lake property. It's essential to us uh, to move that project forward. It's the one with the best resource, the largest resource, the most potential for expansion as well. Uh, so, you know, we have roughly about one and a half million ounces there. We want to grow that. Uh, moving forward with a drill campaign. So BAM is the priority. All our focus is, is on the BAM Gold project at Junior Lake. So also you, you are disposing of the lithium claim blocks. I'm just wondering how tough a decision that was and whether you're getting a fair price for it. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair question. So for us, uh, as I have stated before, we're basically looking at optioning or selling non-core assets. That, that's a process that's actually been going on for the last couple of years. Uh, we have various properties in Ontario that have been optioned out. Uh, we are not sold any per se. Uh, now, I want to remember everybody that, uh, remind everybody, pardon me, that um, 
the lithium assets uh, or, or claim blocks, we call them, at Junior Lake were already optioned out to 80%. So we, we at the time retained only a 20% uh, option or partnership in that. So it was already 80%. And it was meant to be uh, advanced by another company, which is Green Technologies or GT1. So uh, then they came to us with the uh, interest of potentially purchasing the balance, the 20%. So getting out of the option and actually purchasing it. Uh, we believe at this time uh, in the market, we got a, a fair value. Uh, we ended up with, you know, we are ending up with $1 million Canadian plus six hundred thousand dollars in shares of gt1 and gt1 is is a very successful company they seem to be doing well uh, already their share price has increased so our value of six hundred thousand is you know going up uh, we don't have intentions on selling the shares anytime soon so we want to you know join into that success uh, just like we would have joined uh, by staying in the 20 percent and hopefully them developing the asset. But also some people forget that when you have an option and you're say the 20% uh, holder of, of that option, the balance, if you want, uh, if the project is successful in the future, there's development costs uh, and construction costs. And you actually have to put money up your 20% into that equation. And this is years down the road. So the idea was, do we want some cash now, a guarantee now versus a risk or maybe in the future and also having to put up money in the future? So, uh, yes, it was a tough decision, but I think it was the right decision for us, especially that we're focused again on, you know, the band gold project. We're focused on the gold asset, not on the lithium assets. Is the money in the bank yet from the lithium? Uh, literally, the deal is is closing almost as we speak. Uh, it's been in the works since we announced it. Uh, obviously, there's uh, you know a lot of legal hoops to jump through and to finalize everything. Uh, we expect, I mean, I would say the money will be in the bank by the end of the month. Uh, you know, is the is the current schedule. Okay, because I was wondering, wouldn't that be enough to satisfy Canadian listing requirements, or are you needing? that money for working capital? Yeah, so it's, it's a bit of both, but it, it certainly is not enough at all to satisfy the requirements. Like I said, it's going to be a million dollars in the bank coming in. Uh, we have obviously working capital, uh, you know, GNA, uh, you know, to, to, to support the company. Uh, the requirement for the TSXV listing is a minimum of three and a half million dollars Canadian. And this is only a million coming in. Uh, and the three and a half million is really to support, you know, our develops and developments in the future, particularly the drill program that we're about to initiate as soon as the money's in the bank from the financing and we get our listing, we are going to be drilling. Uh, doing more drilling for the next three, four months on BAM. So that's that's key to that. And drilling by any standard is expensive. So uh, we need significant money in the bank to be able to execute on that plan. It just seems as though it's all going one way and that's that's out. So obviously, investors are wanting to, to know when are we going to get something that's going to generate income or revenue for us? Yeah, and, and, and it's a tough question, and, and especially with the UK investors, which have been very supportive uh, over the years and continue to be supportive uh, through this change. Uh, these, uh, you know, these strategic plan and the execution of any strategic plan when you make big changes in a company like we are, take time to take hold. I mean, we have to prove what we're doing now. What's interesting is everything we've said we would do, you know, since I took over in early July uh, has happened or is happening. So we continue to execute as per what we're saying we're, we're going to do. Um, now, the challenge is, you know, it's not only what you do with the company, meaning myself and my staff uh, to improve things. Uh, and we raise more money, there's going to be some dilution, you know, but th that's that's uh, the reality of, of running junior companies. But success, for example, once we drill and issuing a new resource, 
uh, showing that we can expand the resource and this is bigger than you know the one and a half million ounces that we have uh, that is when I think we're going to see some rewards. Now that goes into next year, but that's that's the time it takes to do everything we need to do. Uh, so I believe, yes, that the, eventually shareholders will see uh, see some benefits. Now, the other factor I want to mention is, is we're also at the mercy of the market. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter sometimes what you do and how good you execute. Uh, if the market is tough, as it's been for junior gold companies particularly, and continues to be very difficult, uh, you look at other companies and they've had amazing success at the junior level, major discoveries, their stock barely moves. You know, So big change for us, though, is all of a sudden we're coming into Canada with this new listing with this being pretty well a new story in Canada with new investors, new interests, funds, for example, we have no institutional funds at all in our stock currently. Uh, we are going to have funds in the future. And those, you know, are very uh, solid backup to shareholders or as shareholders for a stock. So for us, it's, it's very key to make this change and, and add, add new investors into the mix and get that, you know, that interest into this, this Canadian company that is, is, you know, quite a bit unknown in Canada at this point. So are you saying that you're confident that the company is going to get institutional investment once it gets that TSX listing? As we, well, they, they go hand in hand as part of the financing. So the financing is a requirement of the TSXV listing. So as we do the financing, we believe we'll get some funds into our stock as well as retail, retail shareholders as well. But uh, they will be, and then we get the listing. They kind of one is a requirement of the other. Then you get the listing, and you're listed, and you will have those funds as shareholders of our stock. Yes. Okay, and just to simplify things, so let's say I'm a UK investor in Landor, and you have the TSX listing. So what is it that I'm getting? So I'm still getting my shares in Landor PLC, but how how am I associated with what's going on in Canada? It's it's one and the same, to be honest. It's very seamless. Uh, this is how dual listing work. Uh, essentially, the price in Canada is linked to the price on the AIM uh, in the UK. And they are by the second, literally, or millisecond, tied to each other with the exchange rate happening. So if anybody, for example, in the UK, if someone goes and invests and buys you know, 100 shares, uh, someone in Canada goes and invests, buys a hundred share exactly the same time. They're paying the same price. It doesn't matter where it is. And they are now shareholders within the same listing. So it's really, I mean, it's dual listed, but it's one pool if you want under L and D. So it, it ends up being really from the same pot or into the same pot. Understood. Now we are in October, it's almost December, and I think that this time last year there were promises of lovely Christmas um, gifts for shareholders. Would you be so bold as to suggest the same? I'm not talking about dividends because that's ludicrous, but in terms of good news. Well, again, uh, I'm going to say uh, yes and no. Maybe Christmas is a bit early uh, because we're going to start as soon as we raise the money, we're going to start drilling, drilling and starting in uh, November, late November into December. Uh, we won't even have drilling results per se by the end of the year. Uh, they're going to come in eventually, uh, the, the actual results in January, February uh, from the assay labs. We'll be announcing some of those results as we go. Eventually, we're into March, April for potentially a mineral resource update. So, Christmas, probably early for good news, uh, but we will keep the market updated on everything we do uh, when we launch the drilling. And as soon as we start getting results, we'll be announcing those. Uh, so there will be good news coming up, but I would say probably better to think of uh, in the next six months as opposed to in the next two, three months. Excellent. Claude Lemasson, Chief Executive of Landor Resources. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you so much.